uh, you know, the whole subject of light um, and that light itself is consciousness. Um, I, I, I go back to the what we know about the quantum physics and how in in uh, the what the bleep series we learned that light itself exists as a uh, a wave or a particle or both or both at the same it, time at the same time but it's only when it is viewed when somebody looks at it when it is perceived by an external something another right. consciousness it chooses one and that is what the the observer sees is, do i have that about right well it's a it's a very complex um process that you're describing which is how does something formless become form because light is formless it's not material you can't even measure it. It has no attributes, and yet. But we could, when, what, are, what are photons? And what, that's isn't a photon photons, a measurement of light. Photons are the 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 packets of information of energy that we call light. Because right now, behind you there in Maui, there's a lot of photons going on. You know, here yeah. in Pittsburgh, it's ten o'clock at night. And not so many photons. I've got yeah. fluorescent photons. Well, that's a different kind of photon altogether. <laughs> but the, you see, what's interesting is it, it's a very uh, slippery slope, the subject you got on, because when scientists look at electrons or things like that, and they create a device that is measuring particles, it measures particles. If you change the device to measuring waves, it measures waves. Is the, if the de So at first they just thought there was a particle wave duality, but in 1992 a team found that if you simultaneously measure uh, waves and particles, you measure both at the same time which basically means this thing we call light can take the form of anything or everything simultaneously. What's interesting about its behavior is you refer to it as consciousness. Uh, if you look at the Bible, the, the Bible says in the beginning, let there be light. And then it says, on the fourth day, God created the sun, moon, and the stars. So one is the first light of creation, and one is the light we experience as brightness. Well, there's a very big difference when physicists are talking about photons. They're talking about that first light of creation, that stuff that literally erupts into form when it is perceived. What's interesting is light, uh, the Bible also says that God is light. God meaning the, the word for the creative force, the animating force. And they say this force is omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. If you look at the literature on quantum mechanics, even though they don't use those three words, they will describe photons, light, as behaving as if they're omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Exactly, yeah. Very interesting. So, for me, light is encoded by the intelligence of life. It is literally carrying the information, continually guiding our entire system. And uh, going back to what you said, you said when someone is looking at it, well, you see, yes, the way that we perceive has something to do with what is perceived, the form of it. In the ancient Hebrew text, the Talmud, it says we do not see things as they are, we see them as we are. Well, there's a, a great truth in that. So then the average person says, oh, 
we create our own reality. All I have to do is change the channel on my mind, choose what I want, and presto, I'll have the parking space whenever I want it, I'll get all the green lights, money will never be an issue, and all my relationships will work. Just fix my stinking thinking and everything will be fine. That's right. right. Well, when you look at that, you recognize something very interesting. Nobody has that experience. Either we're all doing it wrong, or there's something wrong with that premise. So, I recognize something very interesting. Life does not provide what you want. It provides what you need. And from my personal experience, when things, beautifully profound things that happen in our life, much more profound than all of a sudden getting more money or whatever, <coughs> simple, profound things, when they happen in our life, it, I usually find it happens when our life is fine just the way it is. When there isn't some part of us that says there's something wrong with me and I need to change things. So when there is a greater acceptance, then something else begins to to happen. And Yeah, well that's that's the key word there, acceptance. Yeah, and, and there is a way of experiencing this flow of life and it has to do with light and it has to do with understanding something about the way light is guiding us. You see, we were all led to believe that we have to figure stuff out. That we have to make choices in order to decide what to do. But babies don't make choices. Something just moves them from here to there. And you'll notice something. When you're trying to decide something, you usually, the decision normally doesn't come until you stop thinking about it. When you're trying to remember something, you say, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It doesn't leap from the tip of the tongue until the thinking stops. And so we make this false assumption that the worrying, which is not thinking at all, <laughs> is actually what precedes the solution coming. But it's not true. And any wise person, from a spiritually wise person to Einstein himself, will tell you that it doesn't work that way at all. It is not the chattering mind, the one that is making choices, the one that we say is thinking or worrying, that probably decides anything. In fact, there is some very current uh, brain research that's showing that about seven seconds before you make a decision about something, your brain already knows what you're going to do. Mm. Now that's really profound because when you think that every second there's 20 million billion bits of information interchanging in your brain, which is huge, seven seconds is a lifetime in brain speed. This is a huge amount of time. So hmm. when you look at this research, and this wasn't done in someone's garage, this was done at a major institution by one of the leading neuroscientists in the world. And when you look at this, it, it tells you something. It says that there's something in our humanity <clears throat> that knows what we're going to do before we are aware of making a choice. That's the first thing. There's something even more profound. There's something in our humanity that knows what we're going to do about something that hasn't yet occurred. Now, that hasn't yet occurred. Yeah. It, it knows what you're going to do before it even happens. And so, but, but what's there's the a, point? To yeah. a, point to a... a, a a smallness on the size of our uh, that maybe our our brain is aware of so much more than our conscious mind is only aware of the small piece of right. but our total consciousness has a perception that transcends time more than right. you our, see our focus attention does the conscious mind 
functions in what we call local local consciousness, basically here and now, present time. It's all regulated by the current laws of science. The subconscious or unconscious basically works in the field of non-locality, which is the same as how photons and electrons occur, I mean, behave in the quantum field, which means it knows everything that's happening all the time everywhere. Yeah. It doesn't know that it knows, it just knows. One thinks it knows but doesn't know. The other one knows and doesn't care about knowing. <laughs> the reason this is important is because that part of us, that knower, that belly brain, is, is incredibly astute. It knows yeah. about all of life and so when you look at studies where they've taken babies and put a group of babies on the floor on a piece of uh, plastic and put food of every different type from candy and honey and sugar and soda to whatever you would consider healthy food and the babies are immediately attracted to that which really resonates health-wise with them. Hmm. There is an intelligence that knows whether we are aware of it or not mm -hmm. and this is why it is so important and why they say, doctor, heal thyself. Because in the process of recognizing this awesome intelligence that we call life, we realize that we are being provided and guided continually. Not only our journey in life, but you sit with another person, even without having to do very often uh, very exquisite testing, you'll often get a real sense of what's going on with that person. And if you really begin to recognize the way this works, you'll see that life is actually looking for us, which means that it's continually guiding us on the next step of our journey. And we don't have to look for that. It's looking for us. And I live my life that way and I can share with you that there's a magnificence about it. Life isn't perfect. I still go through the same things that every person. I can get a cold or experience sadness or being worried about something but the smallest little things feel miraculous to me. Just, you know, you and I met uh, 10 minutes ago. We'd never seen each other. We'd never uttered a word. We're in the midst of this magnificent conversation, and who the hell even knows where it came from? It erupted all by itself. And we're spending our time looking to make things happen, and this beautiful thing has blossomed all by itself and is taking us with it, and it sounds like you're asked a question and I'm answering. There's something else going on. Whatever spoke the question through you is speaking the answer through me. That in and of itself is just profound in terms of just being in the awareness of that. Allows you to see how little we understand. Allows you to recognize the awesomeness of this experience and the beauty of the simplest little things like having a a conversation with a stranger who you recognize, oh, we're not strangers at all. We've known each other forever.